Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, I know I still owe you a flirting drone video, which I'm gonna film soon. It's just gonna take more time for me to film that video because I have to bring um all the similar flirting drones into one room and start filming. So I've been putting it off. And uh, today I'm gonna uh, film a Hoya video because as you can see, I have a Hoya blooming right now. So this is um, Hoya CV. CV stands for cultivar. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a cross between Hoya carnosa and Hoya serpents. The flowers, I think I kind of like cream colors. Um, and the corona is uh, kind of dark pink with a little bit yellow in the center. And the leaves are really cute. The leaves are uh, very succulent-like because they're um, small and thick with a little bit of uh, specks. Um, so it's still in its original two and a half inch pot. And I got this one from um, Logis uh, in August last year. And as you can see, it's not that big. And it's already blooming for me. I know the plastic cup is kind of <laughs> ugly, but I actually don't see it, so it doesn't it doesn't really bother me. And you can also see the nectar. So it does a drip nectar. Which doesn't bother me much either because it's not too bad. The flowers are fuzzy and you know they're really cute. I believe there are 15 flowers in this cluster. So cute. And in terms of fragrance, um, I wouldn't say that the flowers are fragrant. Um, they do have a smell which is not pleasant. And it's kind of subtle. I also want to show you the other two small Hoyas I have that have peduncles and later I'm gonna talk about care tips. Okay, so oh, okay, maybe I can show you how long this thing is. Okay, so here's the the Hoya. Okay, so here is the other stem and here's how long it is. It's not that long. And I have only had it for 10 months. The reason why I want to make today's video is that people tend to think, oh, you need to have a large Hoya in order for them to flower for you. And in my experience, it hasn't really been the case. I'm sure um, with a lot of Hoyas, you maybe you need to grow them for at least, I don't know, two or three years uh, for them to flower for you. And I know uh, there are a lot of factors that come into play when it comes to flowering your Hoyas, but I just want to share my experience with you. So this is a, a Hoya Bella, which I got from Steve's Leaves uh, in August last year as well. There are some peduncles on this Hoya already. I mean, I counted yesterday. Okay, here's one. So here are the peduncle. I counted yesterday, I think there were four, four, yeah, but right now they're kind of hard to spot, so I'm gonna just show you that one. The other ones are all over, like, here is one, right here. And as you can see, because they get a lot of sunlight, so uh, the, the, the vents in the center are, are more pronounced, so they're kind of like dark mm, maroon color. So that's what the light does to this Hoya Bella. Yeah, like this are just green. I'm sure you can see the peperomia, uh, coin leaf peperomia in the middle, in, in, in this pot as well. Actually, I didn't do it. I don't know how it happened. Um, I checked my um, order um, confirmation email and I didn't order these two plants um, on the same order. 
so they came at a different time they have always been in different rooms so i really don't know how it happened i think that th th this started to uh, sprout maybe last month so it's been maybe one and one and a half months so when it started sprouting i was really surprised i didn't know what it was and as you grew and then i realized oh it's actually a peperomia polybatra i don't know how to pronounce it but i'm gonna put the name on the screen so <laughs> it's very interesting how how they work how this kind of things work um yeah that's my hoya bella and i've owned this plan for about 10 months as well because I got both of them in August last year oh here's another one and Hoya Bella is really really easy to take care of and um, it's one of the Hoyas that grows fast so if you want to get more satisfaction from growing Hoya it's a it's a very good uh, option Oh, okay, so the third one I'm gonna show you, which has peduncles too, is this one. So this one is a Hoya uh, Lucky Eye. I got this one from Doc of Vermont Hoyas last summer as well. Um, I didn't check the order confirmation, but I'm sure it was summer. I just don't know, like if it was June, July, or August. Um, and you can see there are two peduncles here. This is one of the thin leaf Hoyas. Um, normally, that's not what I, I prefer, but this one's kind of cute. And it's in <laughs> its original pot too. So what uh, Doc uh, did last year was he would put a net pot, like right here. So I'm going to show you. So here's a net pot inside a nursery pot so I, I believe this is a two and a half inch pot as well as you can see it's pretty i mean you can see the uh, root system and it's been doing really well and it's still in the uh, moss that it came in so so all these hoyas are in two no, actually, this one is in two and a half inch pots. And the Hoya Bella, uh, I think it came in a four inch pot. Um, you know, it was from Steve's leaf, so I think it was four inch pot. And this one is still two and a half inch pot. So, in terms of the care, so this is a disclaimer. What I'm gonna share with you is just based on my experience. I'm not a Hoya expert. If you disagree with uh, what I said or you have uh, grown Hoyas much longer, you have more experience to share, feel free to, to post your comments down below. Well, first thing I want to talk about is pots. I know a lot of us, my, myself included, put Hoyas uh, in terracotta pots. I remember a while back when I was watching a lot of Doc's videos about growing Hoyas because he's definitely an expert. I saw people asking him the question, so, oh, should I put my Hoyas in the terracotta pot, blah, blah, blah. And his answer was always no. The reason he gave was that it's gonna strip too much moisture of the of the Hoya and he doesn't recommend it. I'm sure you can still flower Hoyas in terracotta pots. Um, I know Julie Nicole has done it, but in my experience, I do think it's gonna take more time or it's gonna be more difficult because I do have quite a few Hoyas Hoyas in terracotta pots and they are large and they are they get bright light. But they had none of them have flower for me. So all of the Hoyas I have flower are actually in um plastic pots. <laughs> so um oh you would say, oh yeah, but your Hoya Bella is in a terracotta pot. The reason why it's in terracotta pot is because it had been in its original uh, nursery pots for nine months until last month when I I lift it up, I wanted to water it and I accidentally drop it. And then 
then I decided to put it in this terracotta pot. So that's the story behind it. So I really, I really don't know had it been always in a um, terracotta pot, would it have peduncles? I don't know. Um, yeah, so the first thing is pots. I believe it's easier to flower your Hoyas if they are in plastic pots or in a pot that doesn't strip too much, too much moisture um, from the plants. Okay, number two is light. So all of these Hoyas are in a southwest facing window, so they get a lot of bright lights indirect light so i don't know how other people define indirect and direct i know people tend to think if your plants are um, on a window shoot seal um, they are getting direct light but in my definition indirect light means if you put them indoors they are getting in uh, indirect light if you, you you put them outdoors with nothing in between they are getting direct sunlight without like you know they're not under a tree or something like that it means they are getting direct sunlight so i know my definition is different from other people that's always confusing to me because people say oh uh, their plants are in direct light but they are indoors so that that part always kind of confused me but i now understand i have a different definition from other people um yeah so so all of these Hoyas are in my bedroom, so they are getting a lot of bright light. So bright light is definitely the key to flower your Hoyas, I believe. And the third thing is watering. Um, I know if you watch a lot of Hoya videos, they always say, um, don't water them until they are completely dry. Uh, or they are they dry out completely. Um, in the beginning, when I started growing Hoyas, that's exactly what I did because I was so scared to overwater them, and so I kind of kind of treated them as my succulents. You know, if you have watched my videos before, you probably know I have a lot of succulents, and I started growing um, succulents before I started growing Hoyas. So I have more experience with succulents than Hoyas. And I kind of treated them as succulents and it didn't work well for me. Um, that's why I started to wonder if I did something wrong because the Hoyas didn't look happy to me. I mean, they didn't die, but at the same time, they were not happy. So I started watering them more often. Um, say, instead of once every three or four months, maybe I, I do it like once every two, two weeks, something like that. Um, I do think, you know, the soil is a good in indicator. Um, so this one I just watered two days ago. So I don't wait till the soil is completely dry to water my Hoyas again. Instead, I, if the top uh, layer of the soil is dry, I, I water them. I, so I would say maybe I wait till they are... Um, maybe 80% dry instead of completely dry or like bone dry um, because it's pretty subjective you know how dry it is I mean we all have different interpretation um, so I don't wait till then they are completely dry or wait till they dry out to water them again but if you tend to overwater your Hoyas or you, you tend to overwater your plants in general, then I would say you should be more cautious when it comes to watering your Hoyas because you definitely don't want to overwater them and, you know, because they are going to have root rot. Um, yeah, so here are the three things I wanted to share with you in terms of caring for your Hoyas. I think I'm going to make more Hoya videos because I do have a lot of them. The next one is probably going to be the differences between Hoya Kentiana and Hoya Woyeti. So here's the last look at this Hoya CV Masai. Masai, I don't know how to pronounce it, but anyway, so really, really cute. Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video, whatever it is. Okay, bye.